I'm here at the farm and we call it the farm, but it's not a farm. But if you read my blog, you'll see what that's all about. I'm going to play with clay. So I've discovered in the last, I'd say about a year or so, that not only is uh, our property full of clay, but it's full of clay that I've actually been able to do uh, primitive fires with. And I've been able to make some items. Um, I haven't taken it to the glazing stage. And maybe that's where you, the viewer, can help me someday with that part of the process. But I'm doing everything primitively. So I'm literally digging the clay right out of the ground, doing a very minimal processing of it. So it still has some grass and stuff in it, which eventually burns out of the clay. And uh, I'm making stuff with it and firing it. And it's actually um, holding water after it's fired. So I thought I would take you through that process. Sound good? Awesome. See how it's really crumbly? You can't have it crumbly, so you gotta wedge it. Normally I wouldn't be wedging on a cardboard box, but I don't have any canvas here. You can see some of the fibers in it, but already just from wedging it like that, it's starting to <clears throat> not be lumpy. I'm doing more of a smash than a wedge, but this is just the initial process. And I just make them into uh, balls, then I put them into plastic bags with a little bit of moisture, and then I start again. So as you saw in my other video, I was kind of wedging the clay and just getting it so it wasn't so full of um, lumps. So that's the clay right here. I have it in this plastic bag. It's really slimy feeling and that's actually good. It has a lot of moisture in it as you can see and uh, I'm going to play with this today and turn it into something. But I just want you to see that it's actually incredibly comparable to clay that I have bought at the store and used like in my university years. And I've always bought that Red River clay and then I'd be running all over town trying to find somebody to fire it for me. And uh, that's where the difficulty was. I don't want a kiln of my own, don't have the space for it at the moment, but I still wanted to be able to play with clay. So I've been doing primitive, uh, primitive work. So as you could see, I could turn this into a pinch pot right now if I actually wanted to. So, and I've made some pinch pots. It's a beautiful consistency, but I still want to wedge it a little bit. So we'll get to that part of the process. I don't know how I'm going to shut my camera off because look at my hands. Maybe I'll use a pencil. Oh, it's got to be a thing. Okay, so uh, normally when you wedge clay, you use a piece of canvas, okay? So, uh... I don't have any canvas here at the farm, so I want something that's actually going to slightly absorb a bit of the moisture, but not too much. Uh, that's why canvas stretched onto a piece of plywood is actually perfect, but like I said, I don't have any here. So I want to do a wedge process. So you push the clay a little bit forward with your palm and bring it up, okay? Lift, push, bring it up lift or push lift roll okay push with the palm 
bring it over, roll. You can also do the same slamming process that I had done. And there is a, is a scientific reason that has something to do with lining up the molecules or something in it. I'll be damned if I can remember that part of it. I just know that wedging is important. One, it gets rid of air bubbles. You don't want air bubbles when you're firing because it can make your clay blow up. And uh, second of all, it just uh, makes it a nicer clay to work with. So today what I'm gonna make is uh, just a little slab pot, okay? So I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm having a really hard time shutting off my camera because my fingers are so muddy. 